Yay. If we click the top Facebook Oops. thing, does it then link to it? Nope. So how do we see it? On. Oh, it's on. There we go. go. Oh, shit. Is it? There we go. Yeah, no we swearing. are live at five, baby. <laughs> Except wow. it's not five, it's eight. Yes, yeah. look, we're there. On the internet. We're live on the Tinterwebs. Oh, turn it off. Who's got it on? <laughs> Evening, John Atkinson. How's your drizzle? People are watching. Yeah. Hi, Brian. I, I can't watch it. How do I watch it? Your phone. Oh, oh technology. Put it on your phone. Oh, I'm smiling. We've got 21 people watching right now. So who are hi, you? People. Say hi, everybody. Say hi Say in the chat. Hello. In the chat. Hello. Tell us something oh. interesting. In the Make chat, out. in the chat. Hi, Matt Mallory. <laughs> hi, Matt Mallory. Love you, Matt Mallory. Hi, Sam and Murray. Hi. How do you do it? Where do people are? Oh, my God. No. I'm Listen. just going to do it. I can't do it. Telephone. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. but, but yay. Got it. Hi, Jerry Wells. And John. Oh, I just realised I pointed in the wrong direction. <laughs> it should be in that direction. <laughs> oh, it's so fun to know things. I got a mute. This is interesting. Well, I think Lizzie's the only one who's ever done okay. one of these before. So I Lizzie, have. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. We're rubbish at this. Um, I am. Sorry. I'm rubbish at this. Um, <laughs> oh my god! I don't know how to stop it now. Stop it's what? just going on. Stop. <laughs> I don't know. I just you wanted to see time. the comments, but now I can't. I just Facebook that. live virginity right now. No, so sorry. Online. Live to the world. Anyway, what? hello. How are we Where's doing? Leanne? How are we all doing? Yeah, um, Facebook live virginity as well. Join the oh, club. Yay! Ah. Oh, hi, Leanne. Oh, Simon's going to be baking with us on Saturday. Oh, Excellent. Wow. Simon, you'll witness me burn my house down. <laughs> you'll witness me drinking a lot of wine. Um, I've got and a eating chocolate oranges. Oh, the dream. Do I use the milk chocolate orange or the white chocolate orange? It's a very important question. You don't have the popping candy chocolate orange or the dark chocolate pop chocolate orange. <laughs> did I say that right? <laughs> I did have them, Jill. They somewhat disappeared, though. Ah, gotcha. Does that ever happen to you? No. This no. is a is this is is this an actual problem of yours, Joe? So you've actually got like two Wait. oranges to choose from. No, <laughs> that's Our a really good problem. problem to have. Twenty <laughs> like, twenty dilemma. You just have them all. Let's Why start don't you do half and half? I've also got this one. Well, oh, well, great. you did. <laughs> There's not much left of it. They're quite nice, actually. I've got bees because I caved. Oh, I had some of those yesterday. They're well good. Wow, this is quite good. Oh, that looks like the dream. Mm. Lind it's got uh. it's melting. Uh. <laughs> oh dear, there's 56 people. Oh my being god! Here. Looking at my how many? What? 56, 63 61 people. 61 people. Hi, 61 people. Oh, we'd we probably better get on with talking about something worthwhile. Then. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the hot damn. This is it. Hot damn. Hot damn. Hot damn. Hot damn. Hot um, yeah, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we just, yeah, we wanted to, I don't know, we've never done anything like this before. And we just want to say hello because we can't gig and it's rubbish. Um, hi. Um, hi. <laughs> but um, yeah, we wanted to just kick off by saying thanks and the um, the merch stall as well. Oh my God, that's blown up. That's incredible. Like <laughs> we haven't even, you haven't even heard a note and you've already bought t-shirts. It's, it's insane. Thank um, you. Mental. But thank you so much. Um, so we have an announcement we wanted to, to share with you firstly. Um, and it is our Hogmanay Hangover Party. 
which is we're going to do a not a live stream gig but stream it and then you can um catch up with it on the 2nd of january um but tickets will go on sale after this q a i presume i'm it's down there somewhere we can yeah. point anywhere we can point this way, there. this Probably way that way this i don't way. know it could be knows? anywhere it who knows be. um i should say that the first 50 tickets sold get a backstage pass with bonus content bonus content bonus content don't know what that means virtual backstage pass. josie knows well josie is uh working <laughs> it out but no we'll do it will probably be some kind of bloopers and some behind the scenes of more chats and potentially we're thinking an after show party where we can all have a little bevy um on like a zoom chat or whatever with everybody so um yeah, yeah. first 50 people to get tickets get uh, the virtual backstage pass so get on it hi hey, that's my jam get on it i'll be hungover just just saying just saying we're gonna um, have like some real crazy yeah. new year's eve house parties aren't we i mean when i say house party it will literally be us in our respective houses literally drinking in our bedrooms yeah. <laughs> drinking wine yeah but come and come and say hello anyway that'd keep be, us company cool. when we do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> why not you know why not lockdown activity so, um, some... Should we crack on with some questions? Yeah, some questionos. Mm. If anyone has a question that they would like, pop it in the chat, which I can't read because I'm terrible at this. So someone else read it. I'll keep <laughs> and we'll an answer it. That's fine. I'll keep an okay. eye on the chat. Right. Okay, who goes first? You oh, go, I go first. I'll go first. You're number one. I'll go. Okay, uh, Nigel Natras would like to know, um, is there any new music written or recorded? Uh, no, we just wanted you to buy lots of merch. April Fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, um, there... <laughs> it's all a massive <laughs> That would be a good, yeah. the best hoax ever, wouldn't the it? The cash, but... <laughs> We've got a nice logo. Um, we yeah, logo, of course we do. <laughs> we um we're working on that we've we've got some stuff in the pipeline we've still um we're still finding our sound in front of the world which is quite tough um as you can imagine and and we're just recording bits here and there whether that in involves into a single hopefully around the start of the year that would be fun um but yeah, we're we're writing all the time now, so who knows? We've got a Dropbox full now, like because we're too tight to pay for the proper Dropbox. <laughs> we we'll basically filled up the free version of Dropbox now with songs in various stages of completion. I've got and... three Dropboxes. <gasps> Have we? I've got two. You've got one. Oh, yeah. I've got a shared one. <laughs> I've only got the one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we've got lots of ideas kind of cooking and we have recorded maybe a song which maybe we'll uh, give birth to at some point early next year we are, <laughs> we are squeeze due, it out we are due to get the mixes back for that i think tomorrow so um that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm next. Dean Halton would like to know, did he win a prize for guessing that the T was going to be the? I mean... Dean, <laughs> you win a wooden spoon. Congratulations! I will post you. <laughs> I will post you my pudding from the bake off. Exactly on Saturday. I won't lick it because of COVID, but I will post you the pudding spoon, and that is your prize for guessing that the tea was there. To be fair, 
honourable mention to Jim Shaw, who I think put in about 60 entries into the Guess the Name competition. And I think Steve Carroll actually did guess Hot Damn. But um, no exclamation mark and no the. It's a bit tight. <laughs> so, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, we're not awarding that. Um, nobody, can you believe, guessed that the name was actually going to be be announced dash the hot. <laughs> so no one gets the prize because that's the band name, apparently. Ah. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't, who isn't aware, basically, if you're wondering why we've got a bit of a strange band name at the moment, it's because Facebook doesn't like you changing page names. So you have to change it one word at a time. Yeah, so it's yeah. uh, And you have to wait, I think, 48 hours between changes as well. So it's a slightly uh, drawn out process. Um, so enjoy that. We certainly are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excellent. Oh, is it my turn for the yeah. question? This is also from Dean Holton. Who takes longer to get ready? I think that's a hard one because we haven't toured yet. And uh, between me, Jill and Josie. I think we're pretty slick. I think we're pretty slick on the I think the getting the ready front. We're fairly we low are, maintenance. We are, but for women, we're fairly low maintenance. I would say Jill takes the longest to come downstairs in the morning. That's because she's still asleep. But yeah, <laughs> late, late for the occasion. But other than that, like we don't, we, we haven't, um, we haven't test trialed Lizzie yet. So who knows? Lizzie might be the one. She might be a hidden yeah. diva. She could be. She could be. I mean, <laughs> as long as I, as long as I can have my morning ritual of showering, I'm generally fine. Well, that's good. Once then. a week or every day. <laughs> once a once a week. Um, um, you obviously once, haven't been on for a month. <laughs> once a month, isn't it? That's normal. In 2020, once a month is a. Uh, I think that's well, so I mean, 2020 has already been about 35 years long so far, isn't it? Longest year ever. Literally. I've only had oh. three showers, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, well. Laura, you got a second half of that question. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where is it? Uh, who would you like to play with on your first big support gig i think that's tricky because we're still trying to find our sound queen but yeah queen the struts <laughs> kelsey carter anyone else go all out pantera 1975 that'd be a fun one wouldn't it kiss yeah i mean beyonce we beyonce would be great slay that her band's phenomenal i'd do that <laughs> Fleetwood I don't Mac. know. I don't know. Like so far, like the stuff we're writing, to me sounds quite accessible. So hopefully that means you know it, you could be the kind of band that could say support the Foo Fighters, or support something a little bit more, I don't know, like heavier, or even something a bit poppier. Because at the moment what it's all sounding like is just kind of that music that kind of could be at home at download or reading if you know what I mean that's kind of what we're hoping to do because we all just want to play to lots of people and have a nice time doing it and um make the music we we like making as well and um yeah. have fun with it as well like we want we want you guys to have fun with the music I think the the songs that we're coming up with at the moment um, make you want to dance, make you want to bloody move move about when you're when you're fucking rocking and stuff. So Get your lava lamp out. Yeah, there it is in the background. There it is. There it is. <laughs> making the a famous <laughs> lava lamp. Rory's butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> she takes it everywhere she goes. <laughs> Meanwhile, my head had to stay at home. <laughs> it was worth it for the content alone. 
No Shall comment. I ask one? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, this is from Chris Owen, and it's a question for the whole group. Who are your biggest influences from the music industry, and what got you guys into rock music? Um, I've answered this question quite a lot of times in other um, in my other band's Q and A's. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a guess as to who my favourite band is, and the band that got me into playing specifically bass. Um, I will name check the person who gets the right answer, but I guarantee you it's not that difficult. Um, <laughs> Because I get on about them all the time. Um, and I think I first heard like Smells Like Teen Spirit. Um, my friend and I were going through a brother's CD collection one time as well. Um, and I came across um, Nevermind. And that was also a bit of a game changer for me too. Um, yeah, so those two for me. Is it me? I don't know. Who's, who goes next? I don't know. I, I, oh. I think I was 12 when I first heard Jimi Hendrix and I was just kind of, do you know when it's kind of like you have one of those weird moments that sort of there's more to life than ABBA and Elton John, which your parents play in the car on the way to the caravan holidays. There's, there's something else out there. Um, yeah, and I think that just freaked me out, and here I am. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of chunk in the middle, obviously. But um, I started off with 60s music, like Zeppelin, all of that stuff, um, Sabbath. Just, yeah, high school was, was a tough time. <laughs> um, I was the weird kid, and yeah, no, I never look back I wouldn't change it but now I like pop that's good um, next from me I mean to be honest the people I've been most inspired by musically haven't necessarily been like famous bands and stuff it's always kind of been like back in the day when you could go to the pub when you were 14 like we'd go down the pub every Saturday and there'd just be like local bands playing and they'd be like 16, 18 year olds kind of thing. Some of them were cover bands, some of them were originals bands. And to me, like that just blew my mind that these kids basically the same age as me were playing this music and like entertaining like a pub full of people. So to me, I found that's kind of what inspired me initially to kind of get a drum kit I was just walking past a um, music shop I think on the first day of the school holidays when I was about 14 and um, I asked my mum if she'd lend me 300 quid and she's like why and I turned around and pointed at this drum kit and she's like all right then but don't tell your father and basically just got a drum kit and just started bashing the shit out of it um, and like learning from the people I kind of knew like watching what they were doing and if they did something I loved going up to them afterwards and being like can you show me how to do that um because I guess it was before the days of like YouTube tutorials and all of that jazz where you can actually watch your heroes up close and personal we didn't have MTV or anything like that and um we had like dial up internet that I had to share with my three brothers so I didn't really get a look in so it was really from like people I knew like uh, it was in Spalding in Lincolnshire where there was literally nothing else to do um, that I kind of got into it and um, most people grow out of it once they go to uni or get a job or whatever and um, we just got cooler go. <laughs> <laughs> some people just keep digging and that's me cool I go now um, what was the question <laughs> what the question is hang on let me get it back up who do you like? Biggest, Biggest influences, influences and what got you into rock? Um, I, I don't know really. I, I've played guitar since I was seven years old. Um, so my, my family bought me for my seventh birthday a Stratocaster. Actually, I think, I think I have it here. I'll show you the Strat. I got... I like the white one too. That's really cool. By yeah, the way. I got this. I got a stag. It's a stag Strat. 
my first ever guitar. It's basically brand new, but I still play it a lot. And um, that's the one I had. Yeah, it's it's a great oh, guitar. Cheese. And, and I <laughs> bonding. <laughs> I've had it forever and I played with it for years. I, I got in a band when I was eight years old and that, that band played a lot of rock music. So we played Nirvana, we played Metallica, we played um, Chuck Berry and we were probably very terrible at it. There are recordings somewhere I, I never want to hear of that band, but it taught me how to sort of rock I guess and and then from that um obviously that band um we moved on from that band got into school bands and and built that and then that's when sort of the likes of Trivium, Killswitch Engage, uh, all that's that scene that sort of uh what, what was that scene like the, the metal I guess it was just just the metal scene wasn't it really um got me into playing guitar I did loads of videos for it. I did lots of YouTube stuff, just kind of learning the craft. And I think rock music is such a good way to learn guitar because it takes influences from everything. It takes influences from neoclassical. It takes influences from blues. It takes all sorts of influences. And through that, you you really do get to build up a repertoire of, of what you can do. So all those bands I've said previously, they've all helped in some way or another um influences now I mean pff, I probably can't go a week without listening to Fleetwood Mac and that's a band that I've been around forever but I never really got into when I was younger because for some reason no one ever told me about them so it was only about five years ago that I really got into Fleetwood Mac and really appreciated like Lindsey Buckingham and what he can do uh, on the other end of the spectrum the more um sort of progressive style of things Coheed and Cambria um, Claudio Sanchez's riffs and that sort of thing, phenomenal. Uh, blue scene, John Mayer as a guitarist, I mean, to sing and play guitar, phenomenal. Um, female rock, Orianthe, bloody great guitar player. Um, even down to B.B. McGill, which used to be Beyonce's guitarist, you, you, when you do your research on the sort of people that front the sort of pop side of bands, you, you notice that actually they're really bloody good and they've all sort of done bits here and there. And it doesn't matter what genre it is, you can always become better. And I think uh, influences always evolve. So what you liked back then, you might not like so much now, but it still matters and it still counts. I love that. Answer I love that little ending <laughs> as well. Well done. Yeah. That's so epic. I'll also check out Laurie's YouTube channel because it's epic. Oh, I haven't <laughs> done, much on it yet. I've done much on it recently. Yeah. I, I lied to everyone. I said I was going to do more and then this band happened and I've been busy with the band and I was going to create like the channel and, and talk about gear and stuff, which I've Apparently, like, I haven't really been a, had, oh, had time to do. I'd love to join you to do that. Can we be the girls that talk about gear? Because yeah. there are many girls that talk about gear, and it's so annoying. Yeah, I've got all of the I've got all of the gear, guys. Tell oh, me, don't get all of the excited. gear. I have absolutely oh. no idea. So we should definitely do a YouTube channel about talking yeah, about gear. Yeah, like, literally, my laptop is sitting on top of my pedal board right now, and my pelly case because I haven't got a table. So gear for days. You've That's seen the state of my Nobody stuff. see cable tester. <laughs> oh God. The, the cable tester is right underneath this box. We're running out of time. Good <laughs> morning. Don't start her, don't start her. Oh, about this. oh my God. Okay, moving on. I want to take this moment to say, can everyone give Laurie a round of applause? She has been burning the midnight oil over the past few months, getting all of those videos, all of the behind the scenes videos edited. <laughs> And that lovely little trailer she magically magicked out of thin air. Um, I think if it's anyone's just... used their furlough money wisely, it's been Laurie, because she's like basically been paid to become a video editor over the past few months. So, <laughs> or is it Rishi? Rishi's been yes. doing me a good on, on that one. 
So yeah, I think I think that is very mm -hmm. good use of taxpayer money. You could have been upskilling. I thought skilling. <laughs> if you had told me Laurie was going to get like six months off to do nothing, I would have said she'd have completed Pimple Popper. <laughs> no, I, have, oh, I, I love Pimple Popper. Naked oh. I probably have as well. <laughs> but <laughs> not Doctor Two. Doctor Pimple Popper is the best. <laughs> Just managed to squeeze in some useful product activities in. Um, so thank you, Laurie, because um, I think I think I speak for at least two of us others when I say you're in a band with some technical retards. Um, We've all got our role. You said in the video, <laughs> we've all got our role. There yeah. are so many claps in the chat. It's so yeah, nice. Oh, oh, clapping, Laurie. people. Yeah. Keep clapping for Laurie. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I forgot many. where people are watching this actually. <laughs> I told you, it's so cool, isn't it? It's like oh. the chat that people are watching. Yes, <laughs> yes, Matt. Let's give Laurie the clap. Let's give Laurie the clap. Matley's call, but I uh, stand by that. Um, Brian Cherison, just, just go that. on Instagram and look up Pimple Popper. And you won't be I'll... disappointed, or no. you will be massively disappointed. It depends. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> gross. It's so good, though. Oh. How do they let it get that bad? Oh, I'm sorry. America. 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 America, fact. This is why we have to love the NHS. Pimple Popper wouldn't exist yeah. if America had the NHS. Because Absolutely. when you start growing a giant lump on your shoulder that smells, oh. you go to the. <laughs> but in America, you wait. We need to move on. Anyway, let's just go now. Oh, God. Right. Okay. Will the songwriting credit be the person who wrote the lyrics or came up with the riff on the tempo, or is it the band credited? I don't think we've discussed that actually yet. No, we haven't so, discussed that at all. Yet. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, you'll all be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think we've, yeah, we, we've not really chatted about that. Yet. To, um, I think it, it will vary song to song, probably. Like all the uh, legal stuff, yeah. Like, It'll differ, probably. And um, I don't know. Yeah. But like, the stuff we've done so far has been kind of like a collaborative effort like yes there's been like one person come up with an idea and send it through and stuff but like thinking of like the <laughs> one we've recorded there's definitely bits that everybody has contributed in their own ways like it's definitely not like one person presented a song in its complete form and we all just learn our parts yeah yeah, I think it's been a definitely a different way of doing it, especially for me. Um, it's kind of like a four-way baby, really. <laughs> it's, uh, which is really interesting, actually, because you, you think um, it sounds like something in your head and then you send it to you guys and then it just turns into something else completely. <laughs> and it's like, well, okay. I called the song or the song that we did a wet pancake and I was ready to throw it in the bin and you guys fished it out the bin, dusted it off and put lots of synths and trumpets on it. <laughs> so. Sorry. There be trumpets in the next song. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Bring out the trumpet. <laughs> but there's no there's no essence of bin juice. We washed the bin juice off, rolled it around and <laughs> Well, we hope so. There might be some. Bin juice. I think yeah. there's still more bin juice in there. Who knows? It might have gone a bit mouldy. Well, we get we're getting the mix. Right. Should we pick up the pace? I think we're waffling. Okay, we're waffling. Let's go. Okay. Go. Oh yeah, we are getting the mixes to waffling. Um, Josie. Okay, Josie, you're up. From Patrick Burroughs, will you have any old material from the Amorettes and the Tequila Days in your sets? Um. So the answer to that is. Uh, yes, I believe we will still be playing some of the back catalogue um, because at the end of the day, writing good songs takes time and um, we just want to put on the best show possible. So the aim obviously is this is a new band um, and 
will have its own material, but to think that we'll be able to pull 14 songs out of our proverbials overnight, although it's not overnight, but obviously it's quite tricky at the moment to actually get together and, and work together on stuff. Um, yeah, so we will still be sneaking a couple in here and there, um, but ultimately the aim is to, you know, start something fresh and, and um, if, if it seems like the vibe is there and it sits right, then I, I think we'll probably, you know, keep it there for as long as it's appropriate. But if it kind of ends up just not feeling like it's really fitting in, then they might go in the bin with the wet pancakes. Who knows? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's, it's good to kind of do a bit of that. I think, I think most bands do, don't they? You know, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's to get the crowd going and something that they know and something they're familiar with. And um, yeah. It's fun. I think it's fun as well, isn't it? It's fun for us as well, just to play something that is a bit older than the new stuff sometimes. It's almost nostalgic in a way. I mean, I know I'm coming in with a band where you guys are actually the members and I'm just this little, this little stranger to the scene. But um, even after last year, like to be able to go in a new band and then play um, the the old tracks with the new band, um, that's going to be fun. That's going to be an interesting reaction, uh, hopefully for from from you guys, the audience. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I think, I think especially twenty if twenty twenty one comes off with with gigs, oh, I cannot wait. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited. You just got to keep on in there. Um, and actually, this Definitely. links into another question that we were asked, uh, which was, which songs will you be carrying forward? You tell us what you want to hear. Like, we, we've kind of got some ideas, we've penciled in some ideas for stuff that we'll, we're kind of planning to keep in the set, but let us know, like, what, what songs you, you know, if you can pick a couple of songs from each band that stay... What, what are your votes for? We're interested to know, because that might yeah. just play it. Yeah, anything is up for grabs. I mean, and there, there was Emirates, talk about we have got four albums, back catalogs, there's, you know, 40 tunes plus in there. So <laughs> dig deep, yeah. And also like there's- Except there's... Pervert Alert, I'm not playing that. <laughs> 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 I mean the good thing about now having two guitarists is that also opens up the opportunity to play some songs that maybe were never played live before because you kind of needed the two guitars so we might even do a bit of um deep diving into things that yeah weren't possible before but now can be Lizzie's gone on strike at this see this she's just walked off what is with that she's had enough She's getting more wine, I think. Oh, oh she's getting more wine. She's getting more wine. We see you. We see you. This is the closest thing to a night out I'm going to have. So. <laughs> um, cool. Harry Osborne's just put uh, up there. Why not put a poll up on Facebook page for song ideas? I think that's a really good idea. I think we should do that. Oh, yeah, that is a good idea. Done. Done. Definitely. Well, we are we're learning the set now for Hogmanay, the Christmas Hogmanay hangover. So start that poll. Yeah, maybe we should um <laughs> get get some polls going. Let's do it. Get some polls on the go. What's next? Who's next? Let's move this along. We're chatting too much. Is it me? <laughs> it is dribbling chat. No, it isn't. It's Laurie. Oh, Laurie. Oh, uh, uh, hang on. Where am I? Where am I? Finn, Finn McNichol. When's the music? We've already had that question. When, when's the music coming? Have we already said that? We've already kind of said that. Sort of. We've answered it as part of an earlier one, yeah. Yeah, we've done that. One. Soon. <laughs> Ish. Like, we, we don't want to go and drop an album that we can't tour. So we've just got to kind of see how things play out a little bit. But at the same time, we also don't want to be a band that's a band for a year with no music out. Because um, 
I don't know about you guys, but I already feel a little bit like a fraud in that we've announced a band with a logo, with a merch store, and no music yet. So yeah. I, I really personally want to get something out sooner rather than well, later. Something is recorded, mixes are coming through. Yeah. It's not like it's not happening. No, not yeah. yeah. It's just taking way longer, thanks to all the rules that the government's giving us right now. But yeah, wheels are turning. <laughs> In joke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Funding. Um, I just hope you don't think it sucks and everybody demand their t-shirt back because we've probably already spent the money on a video. <laughs> on the mixes. And the merch. <laughs> and the mixes, yeah. yeah. I'm sure people will love it though. Fingers crossed. I've had it in my head since I can't remember when I didn't have it in my head. So I think everyone will love it. It always comes up in my head like once a day at least. And it's not, you know, oh, no. not that one, but you know. <laughs> well, I hope so, because I think I think we've we've spent a lot of time on this track that um we were kind of showing in the videos-ish. Um probably more time on this track than we ever would have had COVID not have been a thing. So it had already been number one if COVID wasn't a thing. <laughs> We've egged it so much. <laughs> but um, I think, I think we try to put as much thought into, into this, this track that we've, uh, we've got down um, as much as possible. And so hopefully, hopefully it is not a wet pancake. It's definitely not a wet pancake. I hope not. Otherwise, that's going to be the video. I don't know. How many how many guitar tracks did we end up having in the end? It was like like eighty or something, wasn't it? Like there was ninety guitar tracks <laughs> in the final like session file or something like that. What something like the... you've got you've got the rhythm doubled up with me and Jill. You've got uh, you've got the solo which is doubled up with me and Jill. Yeah. You've got um, the... I think it is about eight, 60 or 80, I think. Yeah, the jangly bits are yeah. also doubled up, and there's two jangly bits. And that's off the top of my head what's on there. So, so with 60 to 80 guitar parts, what's to go wrong? Yeah. Just exactly. going to be a wall of tone. It's tone henge. Tone henge. And there's cowbell. Dave Draper, who's doing one of the mixes, called me yesterday and said, over a hundred tracks. So you there we go. That was it. That's what I'm referencing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll need to get him some booze <laughs> as a thank you. You couldn't say we did things by halves, could you, to be no. fair? Absolutely not. Okay. My question. Christopher Pavey, what Hi, made you choose the name? The actual one, not the to be announced drama. Drama llama, <laughs> just saying. Um, what made us choose the name? Well, <laughs> it was a bit of a bit of a palaver, wasn't it? Because we had about a thousand names on a list that really? we all had to we all had to rag rate uh, red, amber, green rate. You're um, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was, there was actually 350 names that Jill sent through. 410. I, I, was, was. I was cool with the Barracudas, you know. Just saying. <laughs> the problem, I was like number two. <laughs> we, we kept, we kept colour coding what we liked and not many of us were really matching up on them. So it was like, where do we go from there? Where do we um, go now, sweet child? Where do we go, yeah. So I'm. we, we came up with no, no, we didn't come up with the name. I think we, I think we decided on the name in when we were tracking where the videos were, were based. What didn't we? I think we decided then at that, the little house we were in. I think three of us decided we liked it, and one person was on the fence. Yeah, <laughs> we made a short list and of five we... names that I liked, and then said, "Right, are these uh, any good to anybody?" And then we just kind of thought my god it's been eight months we really need to pick a name <laughs> and then we couldn't 
we kind of i think initially wrote it off because we did a bit of googling and we thought it might already have been a band name but then we realized like it was a band from like 20 years ago that hasn't done anything since so kind of up for grabs and i think you know we all sat on it for a while and thought about how it would kind of work as a logo or like as a facebook page name <laughs> um and like it was just one of those names that we kept coming back to and were like actually we kind of liked it every more a bit more every time we thought about it i think as well it was we were trying to brand it as well weren't we that i think that's yeah. what actually ticked it off for us we had a few ideas for different um names and it was like okay we need a name but actually we need a brand for this as well and how are we going to design this what's the logo going to be what's it going to look like on t-shirts on cds um is is someone going to be able to draw this is is a is a kid at school going to be able to draw this and and have it on their bloody sketchbook or something and i think <laughs> towards towards the end i think the hot jam it was just becoming more it looked more and more like a brand um that i think we we, we were able to sell along with the music and I, I think that's i think that's what clicked for me i don't know about you guys but i think that's what clicked for me well i think that, that is so important now like everybody knows that the actual music side of things you don't get paid for it like there's and if you want to do this like long term you need to you know have some kind of way of covering the expenses of doing it because for us to even get in a room together costs us about 300 pounds by the time we paid for everyone's petrol to get somewhere central um and paid for a rehearsal studio for the day and either jill has to drive all the way down from scotland or us three have to drive all the way up there and then we have to pay for hotels and stuff so like just you know the costs of existing as a band are are real um and you know um you've got to kind of just think about how you're going to make it work because if you're relying on your spotify royalty check to it's not even going to cover your greg's sausage roll on the way to the rehearsal do you know what i mean so literally so you know we just and even like with oh, the fact that oh. we knew we knew we were going to have to put merch on sale before we even had any music out because we can't afford to put music out without having a, a bit of coin in the kitty to actually pay for the recordings and mixes and videos and all of that jazz. So we kind of wanted something that was gonna look good on a t-shirt so that even if the music comes out and you hate the band, at least you've got a nice t-shirt out of it. Good pajamas. <laughs> I'd wear it. I'd wear it. So I'd absolutely wear it. I'd wear all of it. Have we got what's the is next question? Turn? Oh, yeah. there's, this is a this is a double a double question from ah. from, from Christopher Pavey. Um, the second question he asks is, "What's the first <clears throat> word of the first song on the first album?" Well, I mean, I think it depends on what first song from what first album. Um, it could be any first album, couldn't it? I think you need to be more specific. If it's if it's if it's album, Nirvana's album. Nevermind, um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what's the first track? Well, it smells like Teen Spirit, isn't it? So <laughs> I think the it first means track is called Sluts and Butts. I mean, if it's <laughs> Queen's A Night at the Opera, I mean, you know, be more specific, Christopher <laughs> Pavey. Oh, Next question. <laughs> is it me? It's Jill. Oh God. Um, Jim Shaw asks, first record or CD you each bought? Your favourite go-to album? The, oh, there's a lot of questions here. The best band you've seen live and or best band to have played a gig with? Let's make it quick fire. Let's make yeah. it quick fire. Okay. So mine... Um, yo, yo, Jill, yeah, sorry. Um, first CD I've bought? Hanson. The album. Oh, I was in love with Zach, the little one. <sighs> I love Taylor. Oh. Everyone loved Taylor, but um, I love Zach. first favorite go-to album. Um, it was Zeppelin Four, actually. Boring, yeah. I know, but um, best band you've seen live? Rage Against Machine, 
and best bands I've played a gig with. Oh. Does Queen count? Queen would count. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. That was a different stage. Oh. Same festival. Um, same festival, different stage. Um, uh, ooh. Yeah. Fuck it, Queen. Next. Cool. Josie, your first uh, record CD you ever bought. Uh, slightly embarrassing, but it was the Smurfs' greatest hits. Amazing. Because I was like, <laughs> the Smurfs go pop. <laughs> I <laughs> had that. That sums you up, Josie, to be honest. I know, but wait till you hear the story, right? I was like 10 and I was buying it with my pocket money and I actually wanted to buy a Now CD because when you're 10, you know, you like all that stuff. Um, but I didn't, the Now CD was like, Twelve ninety nine, and I didn't have twelve ninety nine, and the Smurfs track listing was almost the same, but it was only seven ninety nine. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'll just get the Smurfs version." Wow! On cassette. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Favorite uh, go-to album? Mm, I don't know. Um, it changes all the time. MGK, um, but one that I look. <laughs> <laughs> One I never, I never get bored of Blink One Eight Two, Animal of the State, because they're just fun songs. Um, best band you've seen album, live? Also. Yeah, um, best band you've seen live? Electric Mary, Australian band, absolutely phenomenal. How they are not massive is beyond me. It's depressed. They're like depressing and inspiring because it's depressing that they're not massive because they're so good, but they're inspiring because they're just so amazing. Uh, best band to have played a gig with? Um, the darkness. Cool. Oh, okay. Um, Lisa or Lizzie? Oh, sorry. I'll go. Um, because mine are tragic. Um, first record CD I bought. Well, it was a cassette, and it was either Enya or it was Spice Girls Spice World. Um, or take that's first album, take that and party. You see, oh. I'm not cool. Um, <laughs> favorite go to album. Um. I think that has got to be, I've got two again for this, which is um, depending on application. So if I'm at the gym, it's got to be 101% proof, the live Pantera album, um, or of course you guessed it, it's gonna be Toto and it will be isolation um, because I've recently been in isolation. So that was fun. Um, oh, hang on, my battery's gonna die on my Mac. Bear with. I didn't Run! listen to Run! isolation. Run, one. Laurie Buchanan. If you're not back, Laurie, we're going to answer the question for you with the most we'll make up bogus answers. <laughs> um, best band I've seen live, obviously, it's going to be Toto. Um, best band to have played a gig with? Um, well, I think that's got to be Marillion, to be fair, because I'm I'm a massive Ooh. I'm a massive secret um, secret prog fan, um, but don't tell anybody. Um, so Marillion have definitely got to be the best band that I think I've ever had the pleasure of um, supporting, being main support to, which was great. Um, oh, that's it. Yeah, so that's mine. Um, lorries. Okay, let's make up lorries. <laughs> oh, yeah. she's back. Oh, okay. oh, she's, oh, I was just trying to um, trying to find the question because I've forgotten it. First, um, do you want me to read it to you? What, yeah, what was the question? Where is it? Who is it from? Okay, what was the first record CD you bought? Um, pfft, don't know. Um, the first one I can remember loving, I think that'd be an easier one because me and my mum used to buy CDs all the time with her money, so that counts, right? But um, yeah, <laughs> probably the first one that I really got into and the first one that I can remember actually listening to would have been Evanescence's Fallen album because I was such a little goth kid at the age of about, I don't know, nine Aww. years old. Um, yeah, loved Evanescence back in the day. Uh, what was the next question? I can't find them on this thing. Uh, favorite go-to album? Go-to album? Um, probably Fleetwood Mac, Rumours. Um, from start to finish, that album is phenomenal. And I was very late to the boat in, in finding that album and discovering it. Um, so it always blows me away. And the history behind Fleetwood Mac, it just, I mean, if you ever want to, be a band you kind of want to have that foundation of Fleetwood Mac because there's so much ancestral stuff going on and they hate each other and then they love each other and it's like oh I couldn't deal with that drama together oh, 
God, I'd have a nervous breakdown. It's Hollyoaks, isn't it? I know, Jesus but they Christ. keep it together. I love their vibe, and I think the Rumours album just sums it up for me. <laughs> um, I'd have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> uh, what's the next question? Uh, best band you've seen live? Oh, I'm going to keep this quite recent, actually. Um, last year, I went to see Coheed and Cambria with um, Polythia supporting. And they're quite a young, um, instrument, instrumental style sort of rock. Is it progressive? I'm not sure what you'd call it. Um, I'm going to say Polyphia. Uh, they're just, I didn't even know who they were at the time. And they blew me away. Their sound was phenomenal. Um, yeah, massive fan. If you ever get to see them on a, on a stage, go and watch them. They're good. That's uh, mm. the next one. Uh Best band you have ever played a gig with? Oh, it's got to be Royal Republic. Royal Republic, 2017, uh, the cult classic. Yes. European tour with them. And as musicians, they are phenomenal. As people, they are phenomenal. Um, best, best month of my life, probably just living the dream. That was, yeah, great. I, and I got to see them at Download last year as well. Um, and I can't believe you were at Download last year and I didn't know that you were at Download last year. Dude, I camped the whole thing and played. We did two shows and I camped and oh my God, it was, it was tough. I think Mark puked between sets. I had a hotel. What? <laughs> oh man, yeah. no, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta be in with the crowd on that one. You've just gotta live it. My back was hurting so much. Yeah. You you're a lot more hardcore. I'm with Lizzie. I've, I've done that. I did that. I did that. I did that a lot. But this this time round, me and me and Jim were just like, nah, nah. Let's let's get a hotel. <laughs> and actually, to be fair, I was a bit like, get in a hotel. And then I was like, actually, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm of that age now. <laughs> oh. I was sad. I don't. I don't know um, if Meshuggah was last year or not. It might maybe the year before. But I wanted to see Meshuggah. Oh yeah. I got so drunk during the day that I passed out and fell asleep in the in the field um, at the beginning of their set, and by the end of the set, I'd woken up and uh, they'd finished, and I was just so sad. Oh. It was glorious sunshine, so that was probably oh. 2018. Can't remember now. Oh yeah, definitely wasn't last year. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. Right, next question. Well, so much for quick fire. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's me. I just, I just keep gassing. What happened I? to that? I know. I know. Well, Josie's got the next Come question. Come on, guys. Oh, we've we'll been gabbing for an hour. Sure, no one's life. tuning in anymore. <laughs> um, I want to ask Thorin, why you tried on Lizzie as the new bass face. Did she audition or was she someone you already had in mind? Um, so... Last year was pretty hectic, um, and obviously towards the end, Mark very kindly stepped in on bass for us. Um, but um, we had to fire his ass because he's just a horrible person and um, terrible at his instrument. So um, not really. We love you, Mark. Um, but what an awful human being he is. Yeah, he's, uh, just he's, a band, he's a band slut though. He's in too many bands already. So we needed somebody who kind of had slightly fewer bands on the go. How many bands does Mark have? Because <laughs> I've yeah. got like three. <laughs> oh, he's got at least three. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Bass, it's the curse of the bass player. <laughs> um, so Lizzie had actually been recommended to us um, by the esteemed gentleman, Nicholas Smash. Uh, Is he Rocket tour manager Day. of the year, Nicholas Smash? Apparently. He's, uh, he's gunning for it anyway. Nominated. <laughs> um, he's in the running. He is. Um... Uh, yeah, so he'd recommended Lizzie, and we were obviously on the lookout. And I think Lizzie and I went for a, a cider in the Marlow Donkey probably about a year ago now, and just had chats and stuff. Um, we live quite and, close to each other, so it's nice to have yeah, a fellow musician. We're like four miles down the road, which is pretty handy. And Lizzie literally lives a walking distance from the studio we, we rehearsed at all last year. So that's not that I will walk, of course, but you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, like it kind of seemed to click. And then I think Jill went to one of your gigs as well. And then Laurie came over and we had some drinks. And then we got in a room and jammed together. 
and it, but was, it didn't it, suck no it didn't suck at all it was all right mm. so um no, it, was re- <laughs> it was really good i was um, excellent and like, you know we, we we kind of had a few potentials that we were looking at um but when you meet the one you meet the one that's it just know. if you like it then you should have put a ring on it and essentially that's what they did mm-hmm. <laughs> this, here? this is for you lizzie yeah. She cut the mustard. <laughs> That's a big compliment for you, Jill. Is your favourite is mustard? So <laughs> I love mustard. All right, next question. Um, it is almost nine o'clock. Are people still there? <laughs> we have at least sixty You're people still, been still waffling up. on. <laughs> so Everyone keep me watching. I'm a celebrity in a minute, including yeah, me. Yeah, Laurie's freaking out because she's gonna <laughs> miss her telly. Um, do we want to keep going or quick fire? Still got at quick least fire. We're gonna do it this time. Okay. Um, who's next? Laurie. Uh, Laws. Go go. Uh, if. If you could put one song into a time capsule to be opened in 100 years, which song would be put in it? I am going to go for um, Rhiannon by Fleetwood Mac. I'm going to go Fairy Tale of New York by the Pogues, original version. Classic Josie. Uh, I'm just really boring. I'm going to go Heroes by David Bowie. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go with uh Jake to the Bone by Toto. Nice. Nice. Next. Uh, I'm I'm lost. I can't read it. You ask for a shepherd's pie on your rider at a gig. Would you expect melted grated cheese on top? I don't know if that's an in joke, but ew no, I just want potato. We I wouldn't eat shepherd's pie from a rider. No, to be fair. (laughs) Um, but no no I wouldn't put cheese on it I'd put parmesan that's cheese mate cheese. which doesn't really <laughs> melt though well no it is cheese duh. but it's not um, meltable is that right it's, it's very um, small small very fine very, I, don't I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> next <laughs> i'm gonna say yes to cheese like more cheese is always a good thing like load it on go for it oh is it me Laurie. um what are your favorite albums of the year oh sorry Laurie. did you want cheese on your steak pie what was it no i do not want cheese on my steak pie it's fine too many ingredients. Too many ingredients. Too many ingredients. It's too many ingredients. Laurie's not cooking on Saturday because she looked at the list and was like, too many ingredients. (laughs) Basically, she likes What is it? What's the rule? More than five. (laughs) I just like like the rule of six but less. (laughs) The rule of six. Laurie's been doing the rule of six for years. Mm. Quick fire. Next one. Albums of the year. What's your albums of the year? Struts. Kelsey Carter. Kelsey Carter. The wagons. Massive wagons. That's mine. What's yours? <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd literally get the same list. Struts, Kelsey Carter, Massive Wagons. Oh, there's not even any albums I can think of last year. I haven't even heard um, properly listened to the bloody Struts album or Kelsey Carter's album. So. I don't really like anything that wasn't... Billie Eilish's album last year was pretty good. That was a banger. Even though it was pop, it was a banger. So if you want something new, listen to that. I'm going to go with Massive Wagon's new album um, because they're very lovely boys and um, and we should all support new music and underground bands. So, Good answer. Um, next yeah. question from Matt Mallory. Will this is the last one. Nearly. No. Will there be another poo prank video asking for a friend? Answer is no. I'm banned from poo pranks now. So that's the end of that. <laughs> um, I've got some quick fires now that have been in the chat. So I'm going to do them super quick. Nikki Smash, who's the best TM slash driver slash tech slash babysitter you've ever had? 
Your mum. Mar- <laughs> <laughs> Like, Nikki was a good egg last No, year. of course it's you, Nikki. He saved our skins. Although but... James did, did drive us from Switzerland to Germany and, and Gary. Gary. Yeah. You know, um, and drove, us to... drove us from all the way. Switzerland to Steelhouse yeah. in, what, two days? 15 it's... hours, was it? Via Germany. Via Germany. So yeah. that was pretty amazing. So... We just want to say thank you again for that. That was very intense. Lucky last year, we had a lovely team of people who really helped us. And yeah, if it hadn't been for Nikki recommending Lizzie, who knows what we, you know, this, we wouldn't be here now having this conversation. So it's Nikki's but, fault. Yeah, Nikki. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Another few quick questions. Perry Osborne asks, "Are you all from musical families, or are you the black sheep that your parents wonder what happened there?" Hundred percent the black sheep, but I'm sort of the on- the only child. I mean, long winded story, but from my mum and dad, only child, so definitely the black sheep. Jill, uh, I guess I'm the black sheep of the- me. Me and Aaron kind of come as a collective. We're both retarded in our own ways with the family, so uh, yeah, we we come as a two black sheep of of a very big family that doesn't do anything with music so yeah. <laughs> madness really yeah i think yeah. i think I'm, i am or i was believing that growing up having abba and, and elton john forced on me for a long time and musical theater and then my dad said the other day that he saw he saw johnny cash and my mum was a massive Alice Cooper fan. And I'm like, where, where have you been hiding this all of my life? It's bizarre. So I'm just still going to say Black Sheep. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say I'm definitely the Black Sheep. Um, my parents like music, but they never <laughs> played instruments. Um, and You're the tie-dye sheep, Josie. I don't know what's gone on. Like, I don't know. I, do you know what? Up until I was about 20 six it was all going very well on paper i went to bloody oxford university because my parents forced me to go didn't really want to go university exactly do you know what i mean it's not really a rock and roll place to hang out <laughs> at all and then i ran off to um australia because i wanted to start a band and i knew if i stayed here i was gonna have to get on a graduate scheme and get a real job um but yeah no my brothers all have very sensible careers they're like doctors and pilots and geologists and I'm living in my mum's attic and playing the drums. And tie-dyeing t-shirts now. Yes, mate. And cushions. I know what, I know what I'd rather like be doing. Living the dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The face masks. So I think mm-hmm. we're all black sheeps is, um, is uh, the long and short of that question. Um, Mick Dernian, will there be a Lego, the hot damn? Answer to that is, it depends how long lockdown lasts for. No plans for it at the moment. Brian... Will the chocolate oranges survive till Saturday? No, that's why I bought five. Um, can we do some acoustic songs? No. I think we're thinking about doing something for the for the thing in December, maybe. Was that a thing? Did we talk about yeah. that? I think, yeah, I think there was talk of maybe have like one. a cheeky little acoustic number. Ooh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah, we can do something. Um, Quick fire, favorite player of the same instrument that you play? Easy, Mike Picaro from Toto. <laughs> Jill? Oh God, I hate these questions. You have to use your brain. Come back to me. Laurie? Um, I'm gonna go for Claudio Sanchez, just purely because I think as a guitar player in my own stuff, I tend to um, kind of channel channel what what Coheed and Cambria do a lot sort of melodically we'll go for that cool I'm gonna go Travis Barker because he is the perfect blend of style and substance like hot just saying and he's hot (laughs) I've got a quick one from Perry Osborne that says why are you not showing us your house like the rest of you (laughs) <laughs> and I said it's because I've got Miss Smalls hanging out to dry but Jerusha I mean Smalls. If, if you're really that bothered no 
No! <laughs> don't ruin the magic. Don't look, everybody. Don't look. No, it's because she's super dedicated. She's already got a mural painted on her living room wall of the oh, man yeah. logo. That's what she spent her lockdown doing. I hope you're happy, Perry. Mm. I hope you're happy. Um, Jill, favourite player of the same instrument you play? Um, oh, you know, don't want to pick. Um, so it's it's between um, um, Pete Townsend and Jimmy Page and Rob Caggiano from um, Bobby. I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay. Well, All of them. Cool. Eddie Van Halen. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Um, what's next uh Joseph, are we are we done what's it like being alex thistlethwaite's drum tech it's great they are lovely a lovely band wagons and um alex is a amazing drummer and a very nice chap so it is an absolute dream job shame there's not been much of it this year but um hopefully next year a bit more of that i think that's all that's all of the questions i have managed to capture um yeah we've got a few more little tiny things to mention um but other than that i think that's all the questions thank you for staying till the end if there's anyone left oh, 50, 60 60 people. people trippers you absolutely trippers. thank right, you one quick question from jay bridge what's the best venue for you guys to play in the uk oh I'm going to say um, the Waterloo Music Bar in Blackpool would be one of my favourites to play because it's amazing what Ian's done there. Uh, at, you know, what could have just been a normal pub in the deep, in deepest, darkest Blackpool. He's made something pretty amazing there. Um, and fingers crossed um, they get the help they need so that they're there for us like when, when the world returns to normal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think right now every venue is my favorite venue to play and i'm even including Any. the london ones and no one likes playing in london oh god <laughs> it's just such a pain there's no they're parking loading, they're you loading you off stage you. you're literally playing the last song and they're taking your symbols off stage just and load out. exactly <laughs> throwing them somewhere but even, no, like, oh, even london merch. how dare you sell merch even London gigs I miss right now. That's how much I miss gigging. And I miss all venues and I love all venues to play in right now. That will change when venues come back and I will moan, but yeah, I miss all venues. And I, and I hope there are still some for, for, I mean, not just us to play in um, when all this is over, but you know, for, for kids that are just dying out, I hope there's still somewhere for them to play that isn't on YouTube for God's sake. Like, real playing like with real audiences in front of real fans and selling real merch and stuff you know it's it was such a thrill for me as a kid and i hope there are still some places for for kids to do that amen to that right shall we wrap up the questions then and just hold yeah. on with our little other mentions so thank you to everyone who submitted questions there were some good questions in there enough for us to blab on for 70 minutes so yeah i've seen there's some good questions in the comments as well i'm sure we'll do another live stream and update you with all them at another point as well yeah, definitely um yeah so yeah shoot us we'll, we'll do a poll anyway of um songs and stuff that you that you want to see carried on and we will do our best to deliver um just a few little things we wanted to mention was number one if you're not already in the hot damn fan group jump on in huge thanks to jeremy wills for setting that up um there's already 350 people in there in three days which is pretty uh, amazing so massive thank you to everyone who's um joined us and we appreciate you kind of showing the faith even though you haven't heard anything yet um, and especially to everyone who's bought merch it's amazing if you think about it it's amazing <laughs> it is it's incredible you guys are incredible thank you yeah like mind is blown especially with with the merch side of things like and the fact that it's the tie the tie-dye t-shirt has been the most the mo like we've sold like about five times as many tie-dye t-shirts as we have black ones which I'm gonna do a journey for that by the way so watch out for that <laughs> we will we'll take you on our journey of tie-dyeing and um i'm sure that'll be quite fun for you guys to watch that's some killer content. It's going to be right? a knitting circle. Yeah. <laughs> Tie-dye square. 
<laughs> well, I just can't wait. You know, hopefully, you know, our first gig, if it can be a sea of loud T-shirts, I mean, that's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> you know, you have to go to a gig and it's just a sea of black. And like... My first show, please, anyone that's on this live stream right now, if you come to your first show with us or, or whatever, whatever the next show will be, please just, even if you don't have a tie-dye t-shirt, just wear something Larry and bright and be proud of it. And Let's it'll make it great. a thing. Let's yeah. make it a thing. Yes, anything. anything. Let's say no to stage blacks. Yeah. <laughs> we want to see you. We don't see oh, you in, in, uh, in black tops in the audience because no. the lights are shining in our eyes and we can't see you. So you've got to be loud and proud. It's been a long time. We want to see your faces. Absolutely. Um, uh, speaking of t-shirts, little plug, this is um, a t-shirt uh, from a project Laurie and I... Um, I'll show the back. In. It's the back. There you go, with all the names on there. Um, so this is a charity thing that we were involved in. Um, we went up to Scotland, was it in September, I think? Yeah, it was uh, before the world shut down, um, it's a, an amazing studio up there, Echo Labs, um, and Charlotte and Kerr, who run that studio, are doing a charity cover of the song Little Drummer Boy, apart from they're doing Little Drummer Girl, and there's 12 female drummers, a number of guitarists, and a number of singers um, who all feature on this track, uh, Laurie and myself included, and all the money raised from it is going to um, support Tiny Changes. And I think there's one other charity. I can't remember what it was. Can you remember what it is, Ollie? Is it on um, him? No. <laughs> yeah, check the feature. Um, Do your homework. <laughs> no. I knew it was for a, it's for a good cause. I just can't remember the name of it. But it's for supporting, like, um, mental health. Um, and which Action obviously for is Children, Tiny Changes. There you go. So Tiny Changes is the mental health for musicians charity. And then there's the other one that supports the kids. So, um, yeah, great course. If you fancy um, checking out the song, it's out on the 4th of December. Um, and they're doing like raffles where you can win like signed things from all the people who are featured, like Katie Tunstall's drummer's part of it. Um, Ellie, El Emily Dolan Davis, who used to play for The Darkness and all of that jazz. Um, Nancy's guitar player, I think, was on it as well. Who's that? I think she said, um, Charlotte said, Skunk and Nancy's guitar player. Yeah. Yeah. One of them at some point was on it. There's so, only three guitar players on there. I don't know. I'm really bad. I should have done my homework, really, shouldn't I? But um, yeah. But yeah. The song's out on the 4th of December, so we'll share that then and we'll share a link if anybody wants to have a look at, at the uh, the raffles and stuff and be part of that. Um, and then the other thing is just the Bake Off on Saturday. So if anyone's at a loose end on Saturday, um, Lizzie and I will be creating a healthy, nutritious and delicious alternative to traditional Christmas pudding. It's a triple chocolate double surprise hot damn pud <laughs> so um we've got a professional chef mr gary cox the pie man who um is cooking a lot well teaching us how to do it hopefully we won't set fire to the place um i promise nothing <laughs> <laughs> i set fire uh, to pasta yeah <laughs> amazing um so yeah if you fancy being part of that if you look on our events, it's set up as an event and all the ingredients are in there. Important thing to note is you'll need to buy your chocolate orange tomorrow because it needs to go in the freezer overnight on Friday night or else it will uh, probably be a puddle pudding instead of a hot damn pudding. So, yeah, if you fancy taking part in that, then um, jump on our events list and, and check out the um, ingredients list and grab those tomorrow. And um, I think... Jill's going to join us for moral support. She's blaming lack of basins or bowls or something for not taking part. So she's going to get a glass of wine and a chocolate orange, and that's her contribution. And she's going to heckle us. I can get all the stuff. <laughs> I might not, join Jill's in. Giving us moral I, support. I'm not going to promise. I'm not going to promise. I can't cook. And I, I, I'll, I can drink and eat chocolate orange, though. So. Yeah. If I can get the stuff, then I'll join in. But I don't. I'm I not gonna promise. So I'm drinking as well. 
I thoroughly recommend getting two chocolate oranges. So you've got one to cook with and then a decoy one to eat while you cook. Because otherwise, <laughs> you, you need, yeah, you've you done need, this before. I've done this before. The re there's a reason for my uh, collection. That's Such going a over. feeder, Josie. You're <laughs> a feeder. <laughs> Just a hungry person, all right? <laughs> it's a hungry life, especially in lockdown. What else is there to do, actually? Um, yeah, fair point. And the other thing is, yeah, the hot damn Hogmanay hangover. We will chuck a link up in the fan group as soon as we wind this up, um, if you are interested in that. So that will be 2nd of January, 8 p.m. We'll be doing a few songs, a few electric ones, maybe a little cheeky acoustic one. And we'll also be doing a little bit of a sofa sessions kind of thing where we'll be talking through a little bit about the story behind the, the music and stuff to give a bit of an insight if you're into that kind of thing so um yeah if you fancy that we'll check the link up in the fan group as soon as we get off here and like we said the first 50 people to jump on board we will be having a wee little party with you on the second um that could be interesting um cool uh, that's that's everything on my list well that's us i think yeah yeah, just thank Thanks you everyone. so much again. It's it's been it's been really really good, really cool. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's not too long now. Hopefully, yeah. Just think of the party we're gonna have when we all come oh, back. Oh, mate! I can't. Like, wait. I can't. I'm not gonna remember any of it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Can you also all please submit your nomination, like? for where you want to see us gig. Like if we put on like a launch show, um, oh, cool. as soon as, you know, as soon as we can, where's a good place to do that? I, I Blackpool's a good contender because it's always a good time there. But if anyone else has got any ideas. Maybe one of you yeah, legends. Yeah, chuck it in the fan group. Yeah, Just one of you legends in the fan questions group. questions or, yeah. we want to try and get back to everybody um, as much as possible. But. Tell us yeah. what you want and yeah. we'll do our best to deliver. <laughs> and um, yeah. Okay. Thank you again for everybody like who's come along for the ride and bought merch. Don't forget if you want 10% off merch, sign up to the newsletter. Um, so we Quite can, spam. we love the spam. Well, the thing is Facebook, as we can, Facebook spam. changes rules all the time. Um, whereas at least if we've got your email address, no matter what happens with Facebook, if they cancel our page for changing our name or whatever, then at least we, we can still talk to you. We can still get in contact and you can still get in contact with us. So, um, yeah. Where can they find the link for the mailing list? Is it on our website? It's on our, on our um, page either? On our face, if you're on our Facebook page, um, there's a sign up button. And if you click the sign up button, that takes you to the mailing list. There we go. So. <laughs> No confusion there then. So yeah. Cool. Um, well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we hope to see you soon. Big love. Bye. Bye. Bye.